Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2020. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shannon Doyle Briscoe. Today we're going to be reading Ezekiel 24 through 26 and 1 Peter 2. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and all of those who have tuned in from all over the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Jerusalem as a Cooking Pot, Ezekiel 24 In the ninth year, in the tenth month of the tenth day, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, record this date, this very date, because the king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. Tell this rebellious people a parable, and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Put on the cooking pot, put it on and put water into it. Put into it the pieces of meat, all the choice pieces, the leg and the shoulder. Fill it with the best of these bones. Take the pick of the flock, pile wood beneath it for the bones. Bring it to a boil and cook the bones in it. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Woe to the city of bloodshed, to the pot now encrusted, whose deposit will not go away. Take the meat out piece by piece, in whatever order it comes. For the blood shed she, sh for the blood she shed in her midst, she poured it on the bare rock. She did not pour it on the ground where the dust would cover it, to stir up wrath and take revenge. I put her blood on the bare rock, so that it would not be covered. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Woe to the city of bloodshed! I, too, will pile the wood high. So heap on the wood and kindle the fire, cook the meat well, mixing in the spices, and let the bones be charred. Then set the empty pot on the coals till it becomes hot and its copper glows, so that the impurities may be melted, and its deposits burned away. It has frustrated all efforts. Its heavy deposits has not been removed, not even by fire. Now your impurity is lewdness, because I tried to cleanse you, but you would not be cleansed from your impurity. You will not be clean again until my wrath against you has subsided. I, the Lord, have spoken. The time has come for me to act. I will not hold back. I will not have pity, nor will I relent. You will be judged according to your conduct and your actions, declares the Sovereign Lord. Ezekiel's wife dies. Ezekiel 24:15. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, with one blow, I am about to take away from you the delight of your eyes. Yet do not laminate or beep or shed your any tears. Groan quietly, do not mourn for the dead. Keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your mustache and beard or eat the customary food of mourners. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. And then the people asked me, Why won't you tell us what these things have to do with us? Why are you acting like this? So I said to them, The word of the Sovereign Lord came to me, Say to the people of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am about to desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold in which you take pride, the delight of your eyes, the object of your affection. The sons and daughters you left behind will fall by the sword, and you will do as, have, as I have done. You will not cover your mustache and beard, or eat 
the customary food of mourners. You will keep your turbans on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You will not mourn or weep, but will waste away because of your sins and groan among yourselves. Ezekiel will be a sign to you. You will do just as he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. And you, sons of man, and you, son of man, on the day I take away their, their stronghold, their joy and glory, the delight of their eyes, their heart's desires, and their sons and daughters as well. On that day, a fugitive will come to tell the news. At that time, your mouth will be opened. You will speak with him and will no longer be silent. So you will be a sign to them, and they will know that I am the Lord. A Prophecy Against Ammon Ezekiel 25 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against the Ammonites, and prophesy against them. Say to them, Hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because you said, Ah, over my sanctuary when it was desecrated, and over the land of Israel when it was laid waste, and over the people of Judea when they went into exile. Therefore I am going to give to you to the people of the east as a possession. They will set up their camps and pitch their tents among you. They will eat your fruit and drink your milk. I will turn Rabbah into a pasture for camels and Ammon into a resting place for sheep. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because you have clapped your hands and stamped your feet, rejoicing with all the malice of your heart against the land of Israel. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. I will wipe you out from among the nations and exterminate you from the countries. I will destroy you, and you will know that I am the Lord. A prophecy against Moab, Ezekiel 25, 8. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because Moab and Sair said, Look, Judea has some... Look, Judah, Judah has become like all the other nations. Therefore, I will explo expose the flank of Moab, beginning at its front, frontier towns. Beth Jeshemoth, Baal, Melon, and Kirthathium, the glory of that land. I will give Moab along with the Ammonites to the people of the east as a possession, so that the Ammonites will not be remembered among the nations, and I will inflict punishment on Moab. Then they will know that I am the Lord. A prophecy against Adam, Ezekiel 24:12. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Sorry, 25:12. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because Adam took revenge on Judea and became very guilty by doing so. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will stretch out my hand against Adam and kill both man and beast. I will lay it to waste, and from Timon to Adidin, they will fall by the sword. I will take vengeance on Edom by hand of my people Israel, and they will deal with Edom in accordance with my anger and my wrath. They will know my vengeance, declares the Sovereign Lord. A Prophecy Against Philistia Ezekiel 25:15. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, 
because the Philistines acted in vengeance and took revenge with malice in their hearts and with ancient hostilities sought to destroy Judea. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am about to stretch out my hand against the Philistines, and I will wipe out the Kerithites and destroy those remaining along the coast. I will carry out great vengeance on them and punish them in my wrath. Then they will know that I am the Lord, and when I take vengeance on them. A Prophecy Against Tyre Ezekiel 26 In the eleventh month of the twelfth year, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, because Tyre has said of Jerusalem, Ah, the gate of the nations is broken, and its doors have swung open to me. Now that she lies in ruin, I will prosper. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am against you, Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you, like the sea casting up its waves. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and pull down her towers. I will scrap, uh, scrape away her rubble and make her a bare rock. Out of the sea she will become a place to spread fish nets, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. She will become plunder for the nations, and her settlements on the mainland will be ravaged by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, From the north I am going to bring Tyre Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, with horses and chariots, with horsemen and a great army. He will ravage your settlements on the mainland with the sword. He will set up siege works against you, build a ramp up to your walls, and raise his shields against you. He will direct the bows of his battering rams against your walls and demolish your towers with his weapons. His horses will be so many that they will cover you with dust. Your walls will tremble at the noise of the horses, wagons, and chariots when he enters your gates. As men enter a city whose walls have been broken through, the hooves of his horses will tremble all your streets. He will kill your people with the sword, and your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your wrath, they will plunder your wealth, and loot your merchandise. They will break down your walls, and demolish your fine houses, and throw your stones, timber, and rubble into the sea. I will put an end to your noisy song, and the music of your harps will be heard no more. I will make you a bare rock and you will become a place to spread fish nets. You will never be rebuilt, for I, the Lord, have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Tyre. Will not the coastlands tremble at the sound of your fall? When the wounded groan and the slaughter takes place in you, then all the princes of the coast will step down from their thrones and lay their robes, lay aside their robes and take off their embroidered garments. Clothed with terror, they will sit on the ground, trembling every moment, appalled at you. Then they will take up a laminate concerning you and say to you, how you are destroyed, city of renown, people by man of the sea. You were a power on the seas, and you and your citizens. You put your terror on all who live there. Now the ghostlands tremble on the day of your fall. The islands in the sea are terrified at your collapse. 
This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I make you a desolate city, like cities no longer inhabited, and when I bring the ocean depths over you, and its vast waters cover you, then I will bring you down with those who go down to the pit, to the people of long ago, I will make you dwell in the earth below as an ancient ruin with those who go down to the pit and you will not return to take your place in the land of the living i will bring you to a horrible end and you will be no more you will be sought by but you will never again be found declares the sovereign lord that was Ezekiel 24 through 26 and now we're going to turn to 2nd Peter 1st Peter 2 not 2nd Peter 1st Peter 2 therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit hypocrisy envy and slander of every kind like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted the Lord is good the living stone and a chosen people first Peter 2 4 as you come to him the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and pre precious to him you also live like stones you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ for in spiritual spirit in scripture it says see i lay a stone in zion a chosen and precious cornerstone and the one who trusts in him will never put be put to shame now to you who believe this stone is precious but to those who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall they stumble because they disobey the message which is also what they were dis destined for but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light once you were not a people but now you are the people of God once you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy living godly lives in a pagan society first peter 2 11. dear friends i urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desire which raises war against your soul live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong you may see your good deeds and glorify god on the day he visits us submit yourselves for the lord's sake to every human authority whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong to commend those who do right for it is god's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people live as free people but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil live as god's slaves show proper respect to everyone love the family of believers and fear god honor the emperor slaves in reverent fear of god submit yourself to your master not only 
to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of, conscious of God. But how is it to you? How is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committeth no sin and no de deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not relate, retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to whom, to him whom judged justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Okay, that was First Peter 2, which concludes the Bible with Prisco for today, tomorrow. We are in the Bible with Prisco 2020 for today. Tomorrow we are going to be covering Ezekiel 27 through 29 and First Peter 3. Father, I just want to thank you for your word, because without your word, I could not be a messenger of your word. So I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2020. This has been your messenger of the word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. And you know, as always, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here, and I hope that you are too.